Hello to you. Welcome to Mata Podcast. And of course, it's another session to have interesting conversation and of course, get insight on certain issues that affect you and I. And today, our guest is everybody's favorite grandma on Instagram. She's everybody's favorite person. Everybody loves her. I need to know how she does that because I know not everybody likes me. So she, she, she will share some secrets with me that gets people loving her and liking everything she does. I'm talking about no one else but Kakahawa. She's here with us um, in the studio today. It's so good to have you, ma'am. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. Last time I saw you was um, December last year. Right. It's very good to see. You've been working so hard. Yeah. I, I see you're in Abuja. Next, you're in Jigawa. You're in Kano. Mm -hmm. You're working so hard. Well done, man. Thank you. So, one of the things I know you're so passionate about, I know you're passionate about black love. You rock for love. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're passionate about education, security in northern Nigeria. And by the way, congratulations. You're the SSA to Jigar State Governor yes. on education. How is um, that going? Technical advisor. Okay, technical advisor. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So how is yeah. that going? It's going good. It's, I like to be challenged. Yeah. So um, I'm really grateful. I feel like it's an opportunity and it's a dream come true. I've always dreamt about coming back home to give back to society. And when this offer, you know, comes to my table, I was really um, in a rush to grab it. And so I'm here today. You're, you're back home for good? I can say that, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So we're, we're lucky to have a region back here with us. <laughs> so for, for Northern Nigeria, education in Northern Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, before now, I used to think uh, we, Northern Nigeria is also part one of the most educated mm -hmm. um, regions in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But following your post and also going to read, I realized I have been wrong all along that is not the case at all. Mm. So what are you doing now as a technical advisor to the governor of Jigawa State of Education to, um, to change that narrative? Okay, first of all, I want to answer your first question. When you talk about education in Nigeria, in the world, there is a research, I can't quote who's researched it, but overseas in Europe and um, probably, of course, in America, they said one out of four people uh, in a group is in education is Nigerian and will have the highest education. And mm. everywhere I go, it's proven to be true. true. I'll be sitting among four people and I'm looking at myself. I have a doctoral degree. Agreed. And every group of Nigerians you find overseas, mm. you find one out of four is having the highest education in the world. Yes, the world. qualification. Yeah. But now coming to the reality of living in Nigeria, yeah. our educational sector is suffering everywhere. Hmm. Conclusively, I can't say the whole of Nigeria, mm. but I know for fact in the northern Nigeria, like I'm here today in Nigeria working for Jigawa State, and I have been seeing a lot of um, inequity and disparities among, um, you know, the teaching profession wow. and which entails basic education, higher education and tertiary education mm -hmm. altogether. Mm. So, I mean, in Jigawa State, we have um, our governor is really big on research. Mm. In his manifesto, he talked about um, going, digging deeper and researching to find out where have we gone wrong? What can we do to fix it? And so he engages himself with a lot of experts to come to the table and find out facts and uh, accompany with the research facts to find like action plan on what we can do to cater to the gap, to mm. bridge the gap, gap of education in our state. And thus, that's why I'm here today. Yeah, so, okay, since you became the, the TA, mm -hmm. and, um, of course, your amazing initiative you've been doing even before you returned home, um, what programs or what projects do you have on ground that can change that? So, as a um, technical advisor, I was, uh, or I am tasked to advise the governor, but beyond that, I am on ground. I'm a solution-oriented person. person. I'm a, a creative action plan kind of okay. person. So when I came, like uh, today, I'm marking my 100th day 
in office okay. actually congratulations so for the, thank yeah. you for the past three months i was just going around all the villages i could you know uh be able to to go in person mm. and uh, first hand interact with the people interact with teachers mm. interact with the community interact with the leaders of the community and interact with the children themselves mm. to find out things that are happening why is our education um i don't know like you know in a deplorable in a, state. inadequate in mm. in a in a really very poor state what are we doing or where have we gone wrong mm. and the best way to find out is going in person and interacting with the whole community and for the fa uh, the past 30 days that's what i have been doing gathering information and uh, advising the governor on facts I would find and giving advice on what I think we could do to take care of it. Now in Jigawa State, they are very, very active in teacher training, on mm. teacher training and training the trainers. Okay. So we look at that and see, okay, I will go to the site and observe how the trainers are being trained. Okay. What is the training the trainer? Okay. If we find a, a, like a gap in this training, how do we bridge this gap? So what I will I was finding out is that we it's not we don't have good teachers. Okay. We need to uh, uh, boost the morale of our teachers. teachers. We need to understand and comprehend the economic situations that our teachers are Find going through, yeah. and the low income, low uh, pay, pay, uh, wages. The low wage, earning wage, is affecting their livelihood and is affecting their delivery, uh, delivery of the, uh, their, you know, doing their jobs Job, yes. effectively. For example, transportation. That's it's true. challenging when you place someone in a job where they have to, to travel miles away. Mm. And you know the gas is expensive. You That's know, true. paying for transportation, public transportation, to take you from home to work, work. it will maybe uh, it won't be enabling. It's just providing an enabling environment for teachers. For teachers, yes. So a lot, an overcrowded classroom. Uh, the infrastructure is really we need we need a lot. There are a lot of problems. We need more schools. More. We need more schools, but also for me personally observing and assessing the situation mm. if you ask me my priority is not building more schools mm. is fixing the ones we, we currently have, have. Mm. how can you build a school while the ones you have are in a bad shape and then the classrooms are overcrowded I understand. but if you build a school and if you are going to take the students out from the existing school to provide room for adequate ratio mm. then that makes sense but then we have kids out of school. So we have a lot of problems on our hands we are tackling with. And the education is not one size fits all. That's true. So coming to that realization and understanding, we do have a great team at Jigawa State coming together to start, um, you know, finding solutions and implementing, uh, you know, definitely ways that we can begin to see impact. And I think we are on the right trajectory. Well, how did you get yourself into this? This? How did you get yourself into this thing for education? This passion for for it's children. It's really to teach? funny. Um, you know, ever since I was in secondary school, when you ask me at that time, people will ask us, "What do you want, want to, to be?" be in and I always want to be on TV. I used to fancy the news reporters. I just want to be in front of the camera. Okay. So I was always the kind of girl who likes spotlights, okay. who likes to outshine everyone. The person. And I feel like TV is it. Mm. And I used to think like, oh my God, I don't want to marry a teacher. <laughs> Even back then, because <laughs> teachers don't make enough money. money. I want to be taken care of. Mm. And as fate will have, have it, it, I ended up marrying a teacher. And That's so true. throughout my life um, with my husband, I got married when I was 17. Okay. That was pretty young. Yeah. So my husband uh, really is like my big brother. Okay. So I look after him, you know, hmm. and everything he does. So I got my inspiration from of teaching him. from him. Oh, but wow. actually not even thinking in to realize that my father was a teacher. Interesting. You know, so I okay. feel like having a father 
who was a teacher and now marrying a, a husband, teacher. a teacher, I couldn't escape. <laughs> so <laughs> I started out small business, you okay. know, and I, in America, like when I went to the United States, I didn't have work permit. Okay. You would have to be a legal alien or a resident to work. And so the only thing I could do is babysit neighbor's kids. Okay. So they will just bring me their kids, go to school or go to work. work. And I was earning like one dollar per hour. Wow. So from that, I started developing love and taking care of kids. And also connecting back to Nigeria, I was one of the babies in my family. Oh, I came okay. from a big family. Okay. So I used to be uh, accompanying my sisters to their marital homes, homes okay. in the beginning. And then when they have kids, it's like a doll for me. It's like a doll house. <laughs> I will play with their little kids. babies. Yeah. So I started developing love for taking True. care of children. So when I went to the United States to live now, babysitting for neighbors turned out to be a real good business. And from there, I started opening my own daycare center outside of the home wow. where I start earning real money, okay. contracting with the government for, wow. subs for subsidy because in America, they subsidize child care okay. for low income people. Oh, okay. So then I started, um, you know, going back to school, trying to learn the game of w how it is to take care of someone else's child wow. professionally. Wow. And then one thing led to another. I'm here today with a doctoral degree in early childhood education. Wow, so proud of you, Dr. Thank Hawa. You. <laughs> All right, so la let's, we've done education. Let's quickly talk about black love. I know you love black love. <laughs> I see how you always shower your husband with enduring words. And then I'm like, isn't yeah. she too old for this? <laughs> <laughs> is there ever going to be a time where a woman is too old to shower all of that? Husband? Never. As you grow all gracefully and you are renewing, it's like cells in the body. Okay. This is how I can put it to you. Our yeah. cells are not old to the fact that they make us old. Okay. We are renewing our cells every day, generating new, new ones, cells. and that's okay. the same with love. You water the garden, mm. and the cells of love are regenerating. And with the, each cell that comes out of love, mm -hmm. it's a new, refreshed, energized, beautifully rosed with the sense that takes you and carry you through the world and that gives you the senses it feeds your senses we wow. can't go through life without the senses, senses we have the vision the hearing you know the all of that years. and if you have true love definitely that was feeds your life you know one of those things that we don't see happen all the time in northern nigeria is women coming out to you know, express, you know, love, express how they feel towards their husband. Yes. It's something we hardly, hardly see in northern Nigeria. But seeing you do it, it's a reminder that love has no no barriers, no cultural barriers, no traditional barriers. Mm -hmm. Love is love, regardless of, you know, where this person or the other person is coming from. So the typical northern woman who still feels, oh no, is it okay to call my husband this endearing names? Mm. Is it okay to do this or do that? What is your advice? To be honest with you, it's like life is, has changed now. We are living, you know, in, in the 21st century. century. Mm. And we can't just keep being uh, like, you know, held, held back. Yeah, we can't, we have to go with the flow. Mm. And we know now, you know, we have a beautiful culture, a cultures in Nigeria. Yeah. All kinds of our cultures are to be, uh, um, are to be like, um, celebrated, celebrated mm. because we are really good people in yes. and out. Yes. We are respectful people. True. And our culture is the driving force for our success. True. But in the culture, within the culture, there are things that are stagnating, mm. that they are not allowing the, the, the flow of life. So we have to look at those things and change them. And one of the things is just exactly what you said. We are really um, like shy yeah. in expressing our feelings. And that can, can make us be like um, cheating ourselves from something beautiful, mm. something as beautiful as expressing how you feel. If you don't express yourself, you are going to be cheated of um, a parting 
your own idea and your own gift that you have to the world. And we are here to be contributing members of society. So if you express your love for your children, your children will carry that forward. Your husband will be going out to his world out there seeking for your like livelihood, food to bring home, energized, happy that I left my wife, she hugged me, she kissed me, she told me, I love you, I wish you well. What is there in that to be shy for? And I, for myself, I have to also credit my husband. Till today, I am still the shy, you know, house girl. Honestly, in front of people, I can't call my husband, darling this, darling that. <laughs> as much as you see on social, social media, media, I still have a little side of me okay. that is so much uh, like uh, delve into cultural uh, norms that I'm not able to just pop <laughs> out of it yet. But my husband in front of the whole world, yeah. he would be like, darling, you know, this, this, that. Wow. And I used to be like, people are here. <laughs> <laughs> so I contribute half my um, outgoing nature to to, towards my husband. He allowed, not allowed me, let me rephrase that, encouraged, encouraged me to be okay. who I am. And so if you are, you know, women, we are lucky to have husbands like that. Mm. Definitely you see the fruit of a supporting husband in women um, nowadays. How long have you been married? Um, about uh, 37 years. 37 going on 40 years. years. You're going on 40? Yes. Wow. Close to 40 right now. And you still in love like the very first day. Definitely, definitely. What's that secret? really is um to me is being honest being with honest. one another mm. and uh, be be as sincere as possible in the beginning like uh if something is like don't leave anything like to, to, to don't sleep angry with each other oh, okay. you know talk about things but also wisdom is the key in every transaction in life if you apply wisdom and you will see a better result of it can we have a typical example of where wisdom, how wisdom can help out? Yeah. So when you get to know your partner, mm. you don't take anything personally. And even in life, mm. there is this book I read and it's called Five Agreements. Okay. I live by those agreements. Okay. One of the agreements, uh, the guy, I think Miguel, uh, he's Mexican, he talks okay. about, said, do not take anything personally. So when you see people in the place that they are, the way they treat you, it's not personal. But you have the right to be asked to be treated the way you want, want to, to be, be treated. treated. Mm -hmm. When you don't take it personally, you are able then to, um, pro to not project, like to communicate better. your needs better mm. in the sense that the other person is not taking it as you are uh, insulting them or mm. putting them down. So for me, my husband... Mm. I know that, for example, when we have arguments, he likes to take a break and just handle it. He doesn't want to talk about it right away. Mm. And for me, I, I'm like, I can't sleep until we solve this problem. problem. So what is the key here? Give them room. Give him space. Okay. Give him space. Don't come and demand that we have to discuss this right now. Okay. And I know that it's not personal. He's not like just shutting down and saying that, okay, like this happened, but I'm not talking about it. Mm. He will talk about it. So the wisdom here is for me to recognize that he needs time. Okay. Once I give him that time, I'm able to reach to him in a uh, um, like nice way, mm -hmm. in a more respectful way to mm -hmm. discuss it. So imagine if I insist on my way. We have to talk That's now. like fire with fire. Yeah. Then you crash. You don't get the result you are looking for. Wow. And I remember one of the agreements, it's like, it says be impeccable. be impeccable. So in that impeccability, honestly, you can be sincere, truthful, and be your best self. Okay. Just be transparent. Be honest. Tell the person how you feel. Tell the person what you like, what you don't like, and also expectations, you know. Be open. Be open. And I think these are some keys that help relationship Better. to be successful, so, yeah. honestly, instead of assumption. And one of the things in the book, too, it says do not make assumptions. Never assume anything. Get mm. facts. Mm. 
So I really, I, I go by these principles and uh, they help me. Before I let you go, I quickly want to ask you, um, I remember we still, and I think a lot of people will agree that the rate of divorces in this part of the country is actually high. Yes. Uh, people get married today in the monitor, it is done and dusted. Why yeah. do you think that is so? I think it's in the intentions. I think people are getting together in hastily manner and not with clarity and their intentions are not probably um, in the best interest of having to get married for a lifelong success to raise family. Hmm. It might have been that in the very, very beginning of the relationship, there is a gap. Okay. So if we have a gap in the initial relationship, initial uh, uh, contact, yeah. then we definitely can anticipate a prolonged uh, problem that can result in divorce. divorce and I see a lot of divorce in in today's marriages because uh, it was rushed. rushed and also nowadays family are not involved in the beginning hmm. you see uh, that the, the 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 world that we live in yeah. social media has a lot of uh, impact okay. and uh, in decision making for our youngsters, you know, mm. they just want to have the party yeah. and all the glamour. Yeah. And after all is done, reality hits. Reality yeah. hits, mm. and then you don't have the tools to take care of uh, of of the reality, the things that comes in life. Mm. And it's not in the glamour. It's not in the one day party. Mm. So to go beyond that, I think I will advise our audience out there, if you are young and wanting to get married, to take it easy, mm. involve your family, dig deeper, get to know one another. Because that's how we we used to do it. We, we, we just don't wake up and we are in love. Mm. Love is something that um, develop over it's time. It eventually comes. Yes, it, you, it comes over time. Mm. You, you can have infatuation. You can see someone and just feel mm. like, this person settled. It's, I feel something. There is some butterfly in my <laughs> stomach. But you have to make sure those butterflies, tingling feelings, are not there just for the moment. a fancy yeah, mm. phase. You know, and how would you know unless you take the time to invest? So when you invest, you see good outcome. You invest yes. before the marriage. Mm -hmm. And investing is doing your research, knowing the person better, uh, getting your families involved, mm -hmm. and all of that. Well, Definitely. Because that's, that, that's, that's you are not just marrying the person, you are marrying the, the whole entire family. entire family. Yes. So oh. it takes a village. It's a phrase that will never, like, you know, uh, um, go wrong. It takes a village. It's a marriage. It's a marriage. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, for, for the divorce rate, of course, it's high. And now you talked about things that women can do and also men can do to actually reduce that so it doesn't happen. Now, how many chances do you think um, divorced women should give themselves to, like, one marriage field is okay to try again? I mean, At what point? For me, um, there isn't a number. There's no because number. Because everyone, women, men, they need to live their full life. Life, yeah. They're, who said how many times? Keep trying until you get it right. Keep trying the until you get it right. The world is there. There is someone out there for you. Everybody. That God has designed your life and you, you better chase after it. You cannot sit and be unhappy. The world is so big at the same time, so small because why is small is your time in it mm. so you don't have time to just sit down and feel sorry for yourself so. thinking when is it i fail i fail no keep going the mercy of god is for all mankind and everyone deserves try to be to happy it. if you, you fail much. first time get yourself up and try again you Just again, like the try song. again. Yes. <laughs> you keep trying. But learn from your mistakes. Learn from the last one. Yes. And improve better on yourself. And exactly. Also in the next one. Thank yes. you very much, Dr. Hawa. My pleasure. It's wonderful to have you on the show. We love you. you. I hope you know that we love you. And we cannot <laughs> wait to have you in Mata, by the way. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. It's been an interesting conversation with the favorite grandma on Instagram. Thank Dr. you. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time on the Mata podcast. Bye-bye. <laughs>